This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is it possible to separate nano meshes from the subtool they are applied to? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have a plain 3D object here loaded in. It's been converted to a polymesh 3D. And the question is asking about using nano meshes, and after you have them applied to a subtool, is there a way that you can separate them from the subtool? So the first thing we need to do is create a nano mesh brush. So to do this, I'm gonna navigate over to the brush palette over here and open this up, and I just wanna select an existing IMM brush. So I'm gonna come over here and select this IMM model kit brush here, and just click that. Now after I have this brush selected, you'll see at the top here, the IMM viewer is displaying all the different parts that this brush contains. And now I just need to convert this IMM brush into a nano mesh brush. So to do this, I'm gonna go to the brush palette, open this up, I'm gonna open up the create menu here, and then in here, I'm gonna click create nano mesh brush. So this is gonna convert the active insert mesh brush to a nano mesh brush. So just clicking that, and after that has been clicked, you'll see I have a new brush created that's labeled Z Modeler, and you can see all the different parts are still appearing in the IMM viewer bar at the top. And now if I hover over top of my model, you'll see that I'm already in the insert nano mesh to a poly mode here. So I can come across any polys on the surface of my subtool and simply click and drag, and that will apply the current nano mesh part I have selected. Now, if you want to change the nano mesh part that is contained in this brush, you can press M on your keyboard and come through here and select a new part. So I'm going to pick this hold six here. Or you can come up to this IMM viewer bar up here and come through and select a part as well. So you can use M like this, or you can come to the top and select a part. Now, after I have this part selected, I can draw this out normally across a single poly, and this will apply a new poly group to that area. Or if I would like to use the existing polygroup that's already established on the model, I can click and drag, and while dragging out, if you hold down shift, this will now apply that nano mesh part to all the polygons that have that same polygroup. So you can see, since this plane object had one single polygroup, I'm now able to fill this entire polygon here with this nano mesh part. So I have a single nano mesh part that is being applied to every single poly on the surface of this plane. Now after you have this done, you may want to come through and add another nano mesh on top of this. So I can press M on my keyboard again, and in here I can select another part. So I'm going to select this fasteners seven here. I'm gonna come across a poly again. I'm gonna click and drag, and as I'm dragging out, I'm gonna hold down shift again. This is now going to use the existing poly group. So now I've established two nano mesh parts across every single poly on this plane. So now after you have your nano meshes applied, you can navigate over to the tool palette. You can open up the nano mesh area here, and you can select your index. And this is basically just the nano mesh parts that have been applied to the subtool. So if I switch to index zero and then turn on hide others, you can see this is the first nano mesh part that I added to the subtool. And then if I change this to index one, you can see here is the second part I've added to the subtool. So using this index slider here, you can switch between the nano mesh indexes that you have applied. Now, if you have one of these selected and nano mesh is active, you can also come down here and start manipulating the options here to get varying results with your nano meshes. So if I just add some variance here in the Z axis of rotation, you can see now I'm getting this effect across my surface. So the question is asking, after you have your nano meshes applied, is there any way I can separate them from the subtool that they're applied to? So when nano mesh is active, like it is here, it is displaying the nano mesh index across the surface of the subtool you have selected. So in order for nano mesh to function, you have to have the nano mesh applied to a subtool. So you can't come over here and turn off show placement, and this will hide any of the polygrouped areas that nano mesh is applied to. So if I turn off this, you'll see now I just have those nano mesh parts isolated in my scene. Now this is still using the nano mesh instancing functionality. So I can still come over here and change the different sliders, change the size, and switch indexes, and change this one's here. So I'm still using nano mesh. So the subtool that these are being applied to has just been hidden, but it's still there. 
So after you're done with your nano mesh changes, you can then convert these nano meshes to true geometry, and then you can separate them from the subtool they were applied to. So as an example of this, I'm just going to turn hide others back on. I'm going to go back to index zero here, which contains this part. And I'm just going to turn on show placement so you can see that plain 3D subtool again. And with this, let's say I'm happy with my nano mesh. And now I want to convert the nano mesh here to true geometry. And then I want to separate it from that plain 3D. So to do this, in the nano mesh tab here, we can scroll down to the bottom and open up the inventory area. And in here, you have a button called one to mesh. So this will take a single nano mesh index, the index I have here, and convert that from the nano mesh to true geometry. So by clicking this button here, you'll see that my index is now removed. And I can see the other index has now appeared because I only have one index now on my nano mesh. And if I turn this off here, you'll see that I have the plain 3D object and then those first parts that I added as geometry as well. And if you look closely at this, you'll see that the plain 3D object has a different polygroup than the IMM parts. So after you've used the one to mesh and converted it to geometry, now you can simply hold down control and shift and click on the nano mesh part, which will isolate that part and hide the plain 3D subtool. And now I can come up to the subtool area here and open this up. I can then navigate to split. And now I can do a split hidden. And this will now split the nano mesh part that I converted to true geometry as its own subtool and then it will give me the plain 3D as well. So now I have two subtools here. I can turn off the plain 3D. And this is just the subtool that consists of the first nano mesh parts. And then I have my plain 3D object. And if I come down and activate nano mesh again, you can see I have the other index there still visible on that plane. So if I want to convert this one to true geometry as well, just go back to that nano mesh tab, go down to the bottom here, click one to mesh. This will take that nano mesh and convert it to geometry. I can now hold control and shift again and just select that nano mesh. And since they're all the same polygroup, I'll just isolate it. Then I go back up to the subtool area and go to split and do another split hidden. And now I have that broken off into its own subtool and then the plain 3D by itself again. So now I've taken the plain 3D, I've applied two nano mesh indexes to it. And then I've converted each index now to their own subtool. So now I have three subtools in my scene. The first one is this one here. Second one is this one. And the third one is my original plain 3D object. So to separate nano mesh indexes from the subtool they are applied to, you simply just need to select the object that has the nano meshes applied and then go down to the inventory area here and just click one to mesh to convert a single index to true geometry. And then you can separate that geometry from your original object. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.